Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Why is it when you need a miracle, it doesn't happen, but when you least expect it, it happens? You are married. You have challenges in your relationship, but your spouse is unwilling to accede to any counseling. Is divorce an option? I'm no How does a parent handle a promiscuous child? A what are considered the do's and don'ts of a born-again so couple who is not yet married? There are always more questions than answers. That so here is Apostle Gemma. Very good afternoon to you. Welcome to us, Pastor Gemma. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with me this afternoon. And uh, I have a very interesting question that I'm going to answer this evening. And it reads, what is God saying to us as we slowly emerge out of the cocoon of COVID-19? What is God really saying? Because most people want then Lord, what are you trying to tell us? What are you saying to us? And uh, that's what we are going to look at this afternoon. I want to guarantee you, you can stay with me because I'll be sharing words of encouragement. Um, I'm not going to go on the doom and gloom side because um, when God allows certain things to happen, there are parallel messages and experiences that we can have. There are people who, if we listen to him and make adjustments the way he wants us to make the adjustments, we could live in one experience. If we choose to ignore him and uh, live however we choose, then we will have another experience. So uh, it's a matter of choice. But before we um, delve into the question, if you're a first-time viewer, my name is Gemma Duncan. I'm married to Apostle Vivian Duncan, and together we pass the Divine Destiny Worship Center. Our headquarters is located in Digo Martin on the main road opposite Sardonyx Drive, and we have branches in Sangre Grande in Shogunas. Rio Claro, we have a branch in Faisabad, one in Tobago, and a branch in Antigua. As it is now, we've just started slowly to go back into the sanctuary for Sunday services. And uh, as you listen, you will be guided accordingly. Divine Destiny Worship Center wishes to advise that Sunday services resume in-house at 9 a.m. on the 22nd of November, 2020. There will be no in-house Friday evening services. Midweek services resume as follows. Tuesday evening, 6 p.m. Wednesday midday, 11 a.m. Wednesday, 6 p.m. at the branch churches. All COVID-19 health protocols will be observed. There will be registration at each service. All in-house services are at 50% capacity, first-come basis. Please note the following. Our Thursday and Friday services remain online. In order to protect your little ones, it is recommended that children five years and under do not attend services. If you are not feeling well, please stay at home. Children are not to go to the bathrooms unaccompanied when at church. You are encouraged to attend service at a DDWC branch closest. Added to that, we want you to know that our offices are open, the administrative office, from Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the business center, the three parts of it, they open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. every weekday. Join me on Ask Pastor Gemma Radio on Isaac 98.1 every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. And uh, then our daughter offers a ministry to pastor's kids called The PK Connection. So you can find her on the pkconnection.com. The pkconnection.com. Ministry exclusively for pastor's children and grandchildren. Welcome to the HU Movemakers Podcast, where we highlight folks that are blazing the trail and making moves in Howard culture. Welcome to the HU Movemaker Podcast, where we highlight folks that have contributed to the legacy 
of Howard University at the highest levels. Today, today we got a special guest, special from Trinidad and Tobago, international, <laughs> international. This woman, this magnificent woman, professional, motivational speaker. Get this, y'all. She recently purchased her, published her book, Save, Single, Secure the Secrets. Ain't no secret no more. <laughs> <laughs> the secrets to thriving in your single season. You better go ahead. Certified life coach. But there's more. Master of Business Administration for the University of Cincinnati. Adjunct clinical faculty at the University of New England. Chief resident at the Bronx Lebanon Hospital Center. Got a bachelor's in science and biology and a doctorate of dental surgery degree. Man, Howard University's finest. Dr. Jade P. Duncan, DDS. Yes. MDD, she really do this. Yeah. <laughs> you, you really do this, don't you, Jade? I do, I do. Lifelong Man, student. Dr. <laughs> Jade, welcome to the show. Your, your resume is just powerful. Thank you, thank it is you. It's powerful, I mean. So let's go back to our question. We want to look at what is God saying to us as we slowly emerge out of the cocoon of COVID-19. We're going to come out. It's slow. Um, we not show us in terms of like a time span. I can't tell you. I don't know like when exactly it's going to happen. Will we ever get back to normal as we know it? Perhaps not. And I'm sure you're hearing the words being bandied around the new normal. But what is God saying to us? Let me start by telling you that he's talking to his children. And uh, the first thing God is saying is, uh, you must determine your right to call him father and call yourself a child of God. Because if we want God to help us navigate the pathway through this season, this is, it has been terrible and it's going to be a bit challenging, very challenging um, going forward. Nobody's trying to tell you it's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be challenging. And remember, uh, it's not um, like an experience we have where one part of the world is experiencing something and the other countries can help. Everybody is in trouble. There are a few countries in the world and those that could have afforded to help traditionally, they themselves are in more trouble than those who they used to help. And so, we have to trust God going forward. So what is God saying? I'm going to read in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And if you read from chapter 1 of John from the beginning, you will see that the writer is referring to Jesus Christ. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them give he, to them, those who received them, give he the power, become sons of God. So one of the things we want to be clear about is, am I just one of God's creation or am I a son? Let me tell you, he's obligated to take care of his children in the very same way that we're supposed to be obligated to take care of our own children. And the Bible, according to John chapter 1 verse 12 says, that there is a way to become a child of God. I'm not automatically a child of God because I'm born into the world. Now I know some people would differ with me, and that's fine, it's okay to have a different point of view. I'm just telling you where the Bible says I'm reading this. You could check your Bible and see if you have the exact same thing in your Bible, and then you could come to whatever conclusion that pleases you, and we could live happily together. So I must determine that I'm a child of God. I'm going now to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, where Jesus is instructing his disciples as to how to pray. And he says, In after this manner, therefore, pray our Father which art in heaven. So Jesus says, you know what? When you establish the Father that God becomes your Father, you have the right to pray to him and call him Father. And when you look at this prayer that we all know, would have heard or would be familiar with, you realize that we can afford to ask him for many things, right? We ask for daily bread. We ask him to forgive our sins. 
We ask him here to keep us from evil. And right now, we need to ask God to deliver us from evil. There's an a unseen evil, you know, an enemy that you can't see. Uh, you can't fight some, something you can't see. That's why all of us, all over the world, all peoples, we lose in the battle with COVID-19 because it's an unseen enemy encroaching. We don't know where it is. It's everywhere. <laughs> we don't know who has it. It's everywhere. Anybody could have it. But God says, I want you now to know that I'm your father. And one of the privileges you enjoy um, of having me as your father is you can ask me to protect you from evil. So we're moving on. In Genesis 22, there is a, a report of uh, Abraham, and many of us are familiar with that, on the Mount, Mount Moriah, where God asked him to offer up his son Isaac. And uh, we don't want to go deep into all the details, but Abraham obeyed. And uh, just as he was about to sacrifice Isaac, and we're reading from verse uh, and it says that Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Verse 14 is where we go in. Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And Jehovah Jireh, most of us know it means God who provides. And Abraham called the place Jehovah Jireh. What is God saying to you? He said, as long as you're my child, as long as you call me father. I am your post, your place where you are will be a place where I will provide. Uh, I know we normally call God Jehovah Jireh, but the initial experience that Abraham had uh, it was said, he called the place, he named the place Jehovah Jireh. Where you are could be Jehovah Jireh. When God becomes your father, when Jesus Christ is your Lord, and because Jesus is your Lord, God becomes your father, then Jehovah Jireh is where you are. Anywhere you are is Jehovah Jireh. Your home becomes Jehovah Jireh. Your business becomes Jehovah Jireh. Wherever you are, that place will become a place where God provides. And right now, we really need to hear those words in this season. That's why I told you, I'm not here to um, bring your doom and gloom. Listen, doom and gloom is all around. Nobody has to preach doom and gloom to you. Uh, even if nobody says anything to you, then you can see and experience. Just turn on your television. Just look all around you. And I heard um, the sad story of somebody who actually tested positive for COVID, was ill, very ill. His wife also was compromised. She is sick other than that and took him to the hospital and they sent him back home. They don't have room where they are. No, no beds, no places. And they started, you know, what, what, when you sent him back home, what did you send him for? To do what? Well, we already know what is expected. And so they have to trust God because he's home. She can't take care of herself, much less take care of him. So nobody has to preach doom and gloom in this season. There is doom. There is gloom all around there. And so I came to speak words of encouragement. I want you to know that God can protect you. God can provide for you. But he says, am I your father? Because... At least you need to look like me. You need to resemble me. You need to do what I want you to do. You know, do you have my DNA in you? Mm -hmm. And the blood of Jesus Christ is what solidifies the fact that we have God's DNA. Because they say blood is 90 to 99% accurate. And he says, then I could provide for you wherever you are becomes Jehovah Jaira in Psalm 23, and again, all these are familiar passages. If you look at Psalm 23, we know it, we know as the shepherd psalm, and it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Restore it my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He promised to shepherd us, to look over us, to take care of us. A good shepherd takes care of his sheep. The Bible says a good shepherd would leave 99 of his sheep, having had 100, safe in the sheepfold, and go back out in the night to look for one sheep that's missing. And God says, that's how I care. I really care for you. And he wants us in this very dark season to know that God is your shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And he will come looking for you and me, wherever we are in whatever difficulty we are. And the thing is, God knows where you are. He knows where I am. He, he knows everything. He sees everything. He knows what's going to happen before it actually happens. In John 14, 26, it says he's our guide and our teacher. And we are in a position where we really don't know what to do, where to go, what to turn. Isaiah 30, 21 says, turn not to the right nor the left. This is the way you walk in it. He says, you're going to hear a voice behind you speaking and will say to you, don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left. This is the way you walk in it. Right now, that's what we need. And I'm saying that God could be that for you. Uh, your, your business flagging, what do you do? You need God to say, this is exactly what you will do in this particular time. Let me tell you something. In every season like this, every season like COVID, and I mean, they say every 100 years, there's an occurrence like this. People get wealthy. People thrive. And if you look around, there are some people who got richer during COVID because of what they offered. They saw a need and they were able to provide the need. People with masks, they provided masks and, you know, while some people lost their job, but this person could sew and all they needed was scraps of fabric and they would make masks. And I remember some sister, she's a seamstress, very excellent, and sews for both male and female, and said to uh, my husband, she said, I actually make more money making masks than when I was sewing clothes. A voice will tell you, this is the way. You know, walk in it. Don't turn right, don't turn left. And right now, we need to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You know, he is guiding us along. We, we, it's a maze. All of us walking through a maze. It's unknown territory. And we need his voice to talk to us. In Isaiah 41, 10 to 13, he promises to protect us. So, in response to the question, what is God saying to us as we slowly emerge out of the cocoon of COVID-19? He wants you to know he loves you. He wants you to know that he could be a father if you want him to be. Because there are some people who are self-made people. They don't want God. They don't acknowledge God. They don't believe in God. They don't think that he exists. And it's your right to do. Because God gives every human being the right to choose whom you want to serve, if you want to serve. But he says, if you choose me and allow me to father you, then I can protect you. I can provide for you. I can guide you. I can tell you what to do, where to turn. I can give you witty ideas, witty inventions, as the Bible talks about. I'm happy to say that there are quite a few people who are emerging out of the womb of COVID doing pretty good because they had an idea and God allowed them to uh, put that idea into place during this difficult season. And uh, it's working very well for them. I'm saying to you, you may be struggling now, but it doesn't mean that you'll have to continue to struggle. Uh, God is saying good things. It is no, or not condemnation. It's not God with a big stick because that's not his nature, actually. God uh, is not a big stick kind of a God. The truth is, uh, God is love. His very nature is to love us. The thing with God is, um, he lays down conditionalities. And if you've been listening to me for a while, you'll hear me saying that pretty often. And he says, do this, and this is the consequence. Do that, and this is the consequence. And we get to choose, because that's what, how he made us, human beings, with the power of choice. We get to choose what we want to do, and uh, based on the choice we've made, then we, uh, well, not always suffer, but in one, in one case, you may suffer the consequences, and the other case, you may actually enjoy the consequences of the choice that you've made. So the bottom line is... God is saying, 
I love you, I care. I can take care of you. I know how to protect. I know how to provide for you. You don't have to panic. You don't have to be bewildered. You don't have to feel well. You know, you want to end it all. No, there's hope. And that's what I came to tell you today, that your father and mine sent me to tell you there is hope. And I feel very encouraged because I don't know how I would have survived the experiences I lived through without God in my life in this kind of a way. As a child coming up, I needed God. As an adult, I needed God. Uh, it's not just that I wanted him. I mean, uh, Job said, you are more important to me than necessary food. And the truth is, there are times when in my life, God is more important than necessary food. I needed God as the air you breathe. I was desperate for him. And uh, now I've learned that I don't have to wait for seasons of desperation where I have to call on God because my back is against a wall. Uh, because I've seen him work for me over the years. No, you know, I, I just call on him all the time. In the good times, the songwriter says, praise his name. In the bad times, do the same. In everything, give the king of kings all the praise. Join me today in giving God thanks. Join me today in saying, you know what, Lord, take my life. I give, I give him my life. Uh, I give him a family. This job, I give the job to you. Whether you, you lost it or not, how much the money that I have dwindling, they really not enough to pay the bills, but I hand it over to you. And sometimes God will ask us to do some strange things. The money I have, not enough to pay a bill, but he will tell you, give a neighbor a little bit out of it. Hmm. The groceries you have is not enough to last for the month. But he will say, you know what, take a tin of this, a little bit of that, and give it to somebody who needs. And let me tell you, that's the time you just obey him because he wants to bless you. If when God, and when I say God, sometimes you say, I'm a mind tell me, I feel too. You know, no, you know, I just had a feeling. We like to say that, but as he God in you, the Holy Spirit telling you, I want to provide for you, I want to bless you. Because what you're doing as you do that, taking out of the little that you have, is a seed that you're sowing. And what God does is bring a harvest into your life. Have you ever said to yourself, I really wish I can understand the Bible better. I read the Bible, but I simply do not understand it. I wish I knew enough to share my faith. Sometimes I sit in the pew and I don't quite understand because the pastor uses so many scriptures. If you said any of these things, today I have the answer and the solution to your problem. My name is Gemma Duncan. My husband and I are the pastors of Divine Destiny Worship Center with our headquarters in Digo Martin. And we have a program called the School of the Bible that I would like to introduce to you today. School of the Bible is a one-year program for simple, regular, ordinary people who sit in the pews, whose only desire is to understand the Bible better. Since 2014, we've catered for a wide range of persons as young as 10 years old and the people into their 80s. So it's something that the average person can really understand and grasp. Although we cater primarily for people in the pews, we've had a few pastors who came and they felt that they should just sharpen up their, their information base on the Word of God. Since 2014, we've had the privilege of training over 500 persons in the basic understanding of the Bible. The program lasts for a year. Every Tuesday from 7 to 9, we meet. And for four Saturdays for the entire year, every quarter, we have what we call a quarterly assessment meeting. We also have online facilities, and we've been really blessed. We have had people from USA, Canada, Europe, the Caribbean countries, Tobago, and we actually have what we call a local online group or groups. It doesn't matter where you are, you can access School of the Bible. We have lectures, we have group reports, individual book reports, movies, training in all our presentations that we call Five Minute Sermon It, uh, PowerPoint presentations, I mean, you name it, we have it. And we cover a wide range of uh, topics. Our main resources are the Bible 
and the seven manuals. And I'm going to just quickly um, give you a sense of the manual. Volume one contains the overview of the Bible and the first five books of the Bible called the books of Moses, the books of the law, or the Pentateuch. It goes from Genesis to Deuteronomy. Volume two are what we call the books of history from Joshua to Esther. Volume three are the books of poetry from Job, the Song of Solomon. Volume four, books of prophecy, and the books of prophecy are divided into the minor prophets, major prophets. The major prophets are from Isaiah to Daniel, minor prophets, Hosea to Malachi. When you come to the school of the Bible, you will get a further understanding as to why they are called minor and major. Shifting into the New Testament, volume five are the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the one historical book, the book of Acts. Volume number six are letters of Paul. They are called the Pauline epistles from Romans to Philemon. And volume number seven are the general letters written by a variety of authors from Hebrews to Jude. And then the one book of prophecy in the New Testament, the book of Revelation. Other resource materials are available on request. We, we have them there. If you wish for them, they're not compulsory. You can request them and we'll order them for you. We want to give you a little example of what um, some of the volumes look like. And so we have the cover page for the overview of the Bible, the cover page for the book of Genesis, and the cover page for the comparative study of the Gospel. Call us at 633-3780 for further information. A brochure will be sent to you with all the information you will need. I'm eagerly looking forward to seeing you in School of the Bible in 2021. This is Pastor Donald Duncan of The Body Church and I'm excited to share with you my brand new book, The Mystery of Time, Understanding the Time and Season You Are In. God has fit time into the continuum of eternity in such a way that it governs the human experience. In this, my seventh book, I look from seven different perspectives at the age-old question, what is time? I provide scriptural best practices for discerning God's timing and share effective tools for understanding the end times. Most importantly, I reveal through the life of Jesus the value of living according to God's schedule and tapping into the wisdom of the Holy Spirit for a revelation of the future. Pick up your copy today. You won't regret it. Available now at Amazon.com. I really hope I encouraged you uh, this afternoon. 
And I don't want you to ever forget what Jesus said. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. God bless you real good.